doing this. We're so thrilled to have you. Thank you. Thank so you much. for organizing it. And uh, thank you, Alex. All right, guys, I'm going to be here. If you have a question, you can message me in the chat. Um, I'm going to go off camera and be muted, but I'm here if you need any.
Hello, HowlRound audience. I'm Barbara Wallace Grossman, professor of theater at Tufts University in Medford, Massachusetts. And I'm delighted to welcome you to today's program, which is called Tonight My Heartbeat is Uneven, Artists Respond to the War in Ukraine. Our three panelists are Alex Borovensky, artistic director of the Pro-English Theater in Kyiv, speaking to us from his theater in Kyiv, from the bomb shelter in his theater in Kyiv. Igor Golyak, the Ukrainian-born artistic director of Arlequin Players Theater, speaking from his theater in Needham, Massachusetts. And John Friedman, writer, translator, and curator of a series of worldwide readings of Ukrainian plays, joining us from his home in Greece. Thank you so much to all of you for being part of this important discussion. I don't have to tell anybody watching this broadcast what we are all riveted by, what we've been riveted by for the past month, the carnage unleashed on Ukraine, the brutality of the Russian onslaught, the courage, the heroic efforts of the Ukrainian people to fight back the marauding invaders and to just make us understand as we watch these horrific images playing across our screens, what is happening in the world today, the genocide is happening yet again. And I think it makes us all feel a sense of helplessness that we can't just press a button and make it stop. And that you wonder what can we do? What can we do as people? What can we do as artists to respond to such a horrific crisis? Each of our panelists is an artist. Each of our panelists is a courageous human being. And each of our artists has made a decision to make a difference, to act in, in a specific way right now. So I'd like to start with Alex because he is there in the heart of the horror. And also because the title of this program Tonight, my heartbeat is uneven, comes from your company. So Alex, I wonder if you could just start by telling us how that originated. Uh, hello, Barbara, hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? It's just, yeah, the connection here in the shelter. So yeah, we were in Kiev in the uh, bomb shelter slash theater uh, in the very center of Kiev and it used to be the small independent theater since 2018, which means a lot of actors who speak English and can act come here, pretty much all of them. There are not so many, frankly, in Kiev. And since day one of invasion of Russian swine dogs, that's what we call them here, uh, like we turned it to bomb shelter. Not everybody made it here because it was kind of sudden. I believe this invasion was kind of unexpected on many levels. So some actors made it here. I made it as a director and founder. Not all of them. Uh, Katya Khosroshna, one of our actresses, she lives uh, in the outskirts of Kiev and she couldn't leave because it was bombed from the day one. And basically from that day she lived in the bomb shelter of her building, of her, you know, this residential area. That was heavily shelled and she couldn't leave. Plus she has a dog to look after and the husband to look after, if I may say this. And I was checking on all of my actors. I was checking every day, not to all of them because there are so many, but when I get to Katya and I texted her, she didn't pick up the phone, which made me really scared because if a person these days in Ukraine doesn't pick up, you know, it's scary. So then uh, she texted me back the next day and she says, well, I'm in the shelter, in the bomb shelter. There's a very bad connection here. And, you know, <clears throat> I asked how you doing and she said well I wrote the poem and she sent me the text and this is the text of this poem my heart today my heart is uneven which uh, frankly punched the air out of me when I uh, read it because it's like you know you'll see it soon so uh, then I immediately knew I, I want to do something about it and it's our I guess third artistic statement that we did our first one was very simple Russian worship go f-a-u-c-k yourself that's what we said, and that's, you know, the message. But this one is a pure art, because these are not obscenities. This is pure poetry. It's beautiful. So then I asked Alina, my another actress, to record it, and she did. 
and she did it here, which united two actors, both from two different bomb shelters, both related to Pringer's theater, both Ukrainians. Well, Alex, can I stop you for a minute? Because I'd love to ask Blair Cadden from Arlequin to run that video for us so everybody can see us and then we can pick up after people have. Thanks so much. Today, my heartbeat is uneven. Seems wrong to eat, seems wrong to sleep. They came to free us from our freedom. Their means of helping. Missile hit. Eight years ago, they came from East and world stood watching from a side. And now we have to pay for this, for staying ignorant and blind. I've never been a cruel creature. My heart is numb. My head is swell. I'm tired of counseling speeches. Russian worship. Go to hell. My angels wide awake above. And I am blessed to stay alive. <clears throat> Yet, had to learn to say goodbye to those who helped us to survive. No hatred left within myself. There is no sadness and no fear. My body is an empty shell. Turns out I'm not made out of steel. One morning, I woke up to peace. I'll sleep through night. I'll smile through day. Yet, I'll remember all of this. And those who stood for our Ukraine. It's, I can understand how watching it, Alex, you would be without words. Um, you said this was the second effort that you made and then there was a third. Could you maybe tell us about that? But then I'd also love to ask you about the humanitarian work that you and your company members are doing during the day out on the street, offering assistance to people who need it. And then at night that you're making art and how it's possible to do both. And just if you could tell us a little bit about what you're doing on a daily and nightly basis. Yeah, uh, for this, I'm actually gonna make a little bit of a surprise entrance and I'm gonna invite here Alina, the actress who you just saw in the video. She's with us. She's with us in the shelter. You'll see her and she'll tell you what you do on a daily basis, how we combine art and humanitarian and you'll see how she has changed or she hasn't changed over the days. Alina, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Hello, nice to meet you. You too, Helena, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so uh, about the humanitarian aid that we're doing daily, it changes uh, from time to time, like uh, from the period that you have seen the video, we've been doing mostly volunteering what we can uh, in uh, the suburbs of uh, where we are located and also uh, uh, when we are uh, able to go to the city and to bring like uh, food or medicine to elderly who are not able to move and uh, who are in need of that. Uh, these days, uh, the situation has changed a bit uh, for me personally, because uh, I had an opportunity to uh, reposition myself as a fixer. So I'm working with the international press and we're actually going to the hotspots to the, uh, as, as far as it is possible for our security to the line of the fire. And uh, we are trying to tell the world uh, with the help of the international different uh, press uh, what is going on and to film it to have the evidence of uh, all the cruelty that uh, the invaders are doing to our nation, to our infrastructure, to our country in general. And uh, also I'm combining it like uh, one of the um, things that I'm uh, doing when I have uh, appointments with this press is that um, we are combining help and volunteering we're not just there for the news. We're not just there to, to film people. Uh, we always ask uh, if there's anything that we can do right away. 
and we always try to do it like we bring fresh water we bring medicine uh we bring uh, whatever is needed where we're going we're going to the hospitals where where children uh, who are uh with different diseases are located we're going to the um different military organizations, uh, territorial defense guys, and uh, just to, to the houses of the people of elderly who, like today, we have been to a, uh, a very painful site to see because it is uh, it has been occupied uh, by Russian forces uh, for uh, weeks. And now, uh, as they are uh, reversing their uh, direction of movements, uh, they, uh, the uh, villages are free. And we are able to see with our own eyes what they have done to to houses, to people. Uh, only very, very few uh, inhabitants have left who are who were not able for one reason or another to to go to a safe place. And it is uh, I cannot uh, tell you with words uh, what we hear, what stories we see with our own eyes. And uh, therefore, this is what we're doing on a daily basis. And at night, when we come. We're doing uh, different uh, things with art that we can, we combine since we are here with the professional life, with camera, with guys who can edit. And uh, uh, at the same time, we're doing content for the YouTube channel uh, as well for the world to see the English speaking content. And we are doing a rehearsing uh, plays. We currently have two. Uh, one of them uh, is directed by Alex, who you are talking to currently, and another is directed by another director, uh, Tiana Shalepka, who uh, we have done the premiere this Sunday on the International Theatre Day, and it, it was streamed to the Deutsche Theater in Berlin. And uh, yeah, this is what we're doing at night when we're not able uh, by the law to go out by curfew. Sorry, I was just taking myself off mute. That's how do you how do you find how do you respond to people who say making art now is just an, an escape? You know, how can you take the time to make art with this happening? I mean, I sort of feel you answered it by what you do for the rest of the day. But how do you respond to people who say, you know, art's an escape? Well, uh, for me, art is not an escape. Art is a statement to make our voices sound loud because not many people, you know, in their everyday life, like recently there has been the uh, Oscar ceremony uh, on the beginning of our award, there has been Fashion Week, and many people just uh, bluntly don't take time to look at the horrible uh, footage of uh, suffering children, of uh, destroyed houses, of uh, all these horrible things that are happening to us currently as we speak. So we are finding our ways to, to, to reach people, to make it uh, understandable for the world what we're going through. Because for many people, it is just something that they have seen on the news and went past it and forgot it. And so we are trying our best to, uh, to make it sound loud. Well, it's it's certainly resonating through the channels that we have access to. And thank you for your courage and your commitment to everything that you're doing. I'd like at this point to just ask Blair to show the photographs we have of people taking shelter in your theater where you are and use that to segue to Igor, because I know Igor, when you saw those pictures, you were profoundly impacted by them. So Blair, could we see them? Yeah. Oh, that's us. Yeah. So that there you are in your your shelter in the theater. <laughs> and Igor, can you just share with us um, how you responded when you saw them for the first time on Facebook? Uh, it's uh, thank you, uh, Alex, and um, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Yes, Helena? yes, yes. Polina is my name. Polina. Hi. Uh, thank you, Polina. Uh, it's it's so weird to to speak after and during and before uh, what uh, what people are actually going through. Uh, you know, I have a small. Uh, I run a sm uh, a small nonprofit uh, outside of Boston, and we have a black box theater here, and it actually looks very similar <laughs> to, to your black box, and. Um, 
I just uh, understood that the, this black box where I'm sitting right now uh, could be your black box or I could be there. I'm actually originally from Kiev. Uh, I immigrated when I was 11. Um, uh, so I could have, this, this could have been me uh, with you there and I'm somehow I'm here some for some reason and um but my heart is there and uh, this uh, these pictures made the connection and that's all i want to say because it's completely i don't know it's completely irrelevant uh, what i feel i think uh what uh, what a lot of people feel i would say is that uh the uh, as much as we are doing as much as i'm doing it's uh it, it's not enough of course and uh that's what we live with uh, every day. Uh, but uh, my heart is with you and my soul is with you. And I'm with you in that shelter. That's all. You know, Thank you very much for these uh, kind words. And I just want to say it is very important to understand that we are that we really appreciate. And I wouldn't say that it is irrelevant what you feel, because for me, the most important thing is that uh, all world uh, unites and empathizes and Therefore, nothing like that will ever happen again, because uh, when people understand things like that, even without going through them, even just as you say, your heart is with us. And that means a world to us. It is tremendous support because it is crucial to understand that we're not just alone fighting this war. A uh, whole world is which is saying is fighting for the democracy in any way we can because if we would be alone uh, that would be a completely different story of course our uh, military forces and our men who are at the line of the fire are brave and uh, we are super grateful to them to our president to everything who everyone who is there uh, giving their lives but uh, without the support that all of us are giving on different levels. It, it wouldn't be possible for us to, to stand. I think it's made us all very cognizant of how fragile democracy is and how imperiled democracies are throughout the world. And Igor, I can imagine the connection you feel because I'm the granddaughter of people who came from the Ukraine and Poland at the turn of the last century. So it's a very eerie feeling to be seeing what's happening and also to have that sense of this is where my family came from far more distantly than Igor's, but that sense of connection that we do feel as people who care deeply and want to help in some way. Igor, can you speak about what you and Arlikin are doing as part of your efforts to contribute yeah. to consciousness raising and fundraising? Yeah. We started a couple of different, we started one campaign and we've kind of, sh we're shifting between fundraising for different uh, organizations. Uh, so we started a campaign called Artists for Ukraine and we have collected, uh, we have collected um, uh, uh, pleas for, for help from different artists uh, presenting, some of them presenting their work, doing poetry, uh, artists from Ukraine, uh, from uh, uh, from all over the world, a lot a lot from 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 the United States, some Hollywood actors, and we um, we were fundraising for Nova Ukraine, which is a humanitarian aid um, organization, and we did that for uh, for I don't know a, a couple of weeks maybe, and then we started fundraising uh, right now for a hotel in Dnipro that hosts refugees uh, as they pass. And we actually, um, my wife has a uh, has a personal friend that's that's there, uh, that and and uh, we we have their pictures on our website uh, on arlikenplayers.com, and uh, we, we are sending. There has been a lot of actually response for 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 our small Boston community. Uh, there has been a lot of response um, uh, to to both of the organizations and both of the fundraisers. Um, and the next one we're going going to do is uh, there's a different organization called Remember Us that we're looking to uh, support as well that sends money directly to people uh, to, to actually uh, directly to people uh, that are in dire need in Ukraine and they get lists of uh, lists of people that are in need from uh, city councils and 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 so forth. Um, so the, this is the only thing, unfortunately, only thing we're doing. 
I wouldn't say, unfortunately, Igor, we can't thrust ourselves into the center of the battle. We can't be a fixer like you, Alina, but at least we can do something here. And I, I think that in its own way can have an impact. Um, so don't minimize it. I'd like to just move to John. And John, you're really, <laughs> you're amazing. In 2020, in response to the crisis in Belarus, the brutal crackdown because of election protests, you organized a worldwide reading project called Insulted Belarus. And now fast forward two years later because of yet another crisis, a war, uh, Putin's war, you're organizing another series of worldwide readings, this time obviously, of course, Ukrainian plays. Could you speak to us about number one, the difference between these two projects and why you are so committed to curating this reading series now, what right. you hope well, will accomplish. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. I, um, I, I will say that I feel as though I have very little to do with it. This is something that history and, 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 and has brought to me. <laughs> I, I just, I just, you know, I'm thinking Bob Dylan's, you know, saying, I don't write my songs. I just, I wait for them to come to me. I feel like these are, these things are coming to me. Um, and uh, indeed the Belarus project came to me by way of Andrei Kurechik, the playwright who wrote a brilliant play called Insulted Belarus. And we organized over a year and a half, uh, some 200 readings and, uh, 32 countries in 110 theaters and on and on. Mm. Astonishing numbers, actually. actually, And um, and so I, I had this large group of people all over the world uh, that were, had been working with me for a year and a half. And uh, it was literally just hours after uh, Putin sent troops into Ukraine uh, I I immediately started, I, I thought, what do I do? I'm a writer. What do I do? I'm going to write an article. And I sat down to write an article about how this was destroying everything I'd ever worked for. Um, and about five hours later, I get an email from a friend of mine, William Wong in Hong Kong. And he says, John, what do we do? <laughs> and I thought, Damn. Yeah, and, and I quick finished up my article and I said, yeah, what do we do? And, and I said, well, I'll get some plays together, William. And he says, well, I'm ready to do something as soon as you, as soon as you get me a play. So I quick reached out to some friends uh, in, in the UK who got me some plays. Um, I quickly sent them out to all of the people I'd been working with for, for a year and a half on the Belarus project and the people responded virtually instantly um and this has now grown we now have over we have over 50 ukrainian plays that we're offering uh, people that want to do readings um they are translated into at least 10 languages uh, english being the main one but there's a lot of languages that we have now slovak uh, french german finnish um, we have a, a, a lot of people all over the world are, are working with us. Chinese, again, uh, Hong Kong. And um, we now have, as of today, we have approximately 100 readings pledged over the next month or two, uh, of which 45, I think, have already happened. Uh, all of them are including fundraising elements. All of the writers said to us, we do not require um, uh, fees, honorariums, as long as there's a fundraising element. And so everybody has been raising funds. Uh, again, William Wong in Hong Kong, who is simply a hero of this world, they raised $16,000 in, in one night. Um, uh, Philip Arnaud at Center for International uh, theater development uh, put up a $15,000 commission of plays for uh, writers who are working with the, the new theater of playwrights in Kiev. Um, uh, Noah Berkstead Breen at Sputnik Theater in London uh, told me, he says, I, I went to my bank account, my theater's bank account, and he said, I had a thousand bucks left. 
And he said, I'm pulling that thousand bucks out and I'm going to pay for a play for by a Ukrainian writer. And he emptied out his bank account in order to uh, commission a play from uh, Andriy Bandarenka in, in Kiev. Uh, and it, the stories like this go on and on that, that people are themselves, they're coming to me. They are coming and asking, what can we do? Um, people want to, they want to donate money. They want to rate, uh, organize readings. They want to do things. They want to be a part of this. And uh, it's uh, pretty astonishing to be a part of, to be honest with you. I, I think uh, I feel humbled and uh, by the incredible goodness of at least this group of people I happen to be connected to. I don't, I don't know about the rest of the world, <laughs> but I have, I have a group of over 150 people who, boy, I, I, I would go through thick and thin for them because they do for, for us and for other people. And so that's, that's, that's kind of the, the, the nitty gritty of it. I have one more thing I wanna say about this, that my, we, my wife and I extracted uh, her relatives from Dnipro uh, uh, Oksana went to meet them. They got out through, uh, uh, through Poland. Oksana went and met them, uh, drove down here to where we live uh, in Greece. And they are now living here with us in Greece. And uh, for many of the plays that, we're, that I'm translating now for this project, I need a Ukrainian partner because I, uh, I speak Russian. I don't speak Ukrainian. I can understand a lot of Ukrainian. I have Polish but it's not good enough for me to sit down and translate a Ukrainian text on my own. That wouldn't be fair. So my um, relative, uh, Natalia Bratus, who is here, comes over to uh, here, sits down in the, in the chair behind me. She holds a text in front of her that is in Ukrainian. She reads it in Russian. I sit here and I type it out in English, ask mm -hmm. questions, ask for you know, nuances, and we do this together. And so Natalia Bratus has, uh, has gone from being a refugee from Dnipro to being uh, a, my main partner in translating plays, Ukrainian plays into English for the world. And I, 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 I think it's a beautiful little story. It's a little story, but it's a beautiful one. <laughs> it really is. It, it, one thing. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to add, John, the, the, the way that you've, uh, I, I really want to kind of point out this, this uh, uh, what, what has happened and the way that you've united people uh, for important causes in Eastern Europe, unfortunately, or for, uh, you know, un unfortunately the causes, but fortunately you've united people is just incredible. The work that you do and, and the integrity that you have with which you uh, you give out, uh, give out so much, so, so much connection and so much work and so much uh, con connection between people is just astounding. And uh, uh, I think, I think, I think the amount of information, the amount of performances and productions of uh, the Belarus uh, crisis and now this war because of your effort is just incredible. And I really want to thank you for it. We know each other, I think, just on Zoom, but I, I really want to thank you for, for all you're doing. That's, I, I'm very grateful for that. And I just want to say that I was talking, I was uh, exchanging messages with Andriy Bandarenka in Kiev today. And I, I told him, I said, I want to bury Putin in Ukrainian plays. And so my, my goal is to bury Putin in Ukrainian plays. <laughs> Can I say, uh, John, uh, I missed part of it because electricity went off here in a, in a shelter. But I went back to, the, to hear the ending. And yeah, uh, that's a tremendous story that you did with Ukrainian plays. Because, well, for me personally, for two reasons. First of all, many people, well, here, us included, thought that Ukrainian playwrights are not the best. The Ukrainian playwright is just getting back into its, uh, when it was destroyed in 1930s by Soviet uh, KGB and stuff, when all the playwrights were shot. So mm -hmm. modern playwrights are still not the best, and to find those uh, the best and translate them into English, that's a great thing. So that's, uh, especially in these times. Another point that I wanted to mention, like Ukraine is tremendously united right now. And I missed this part, but I think there was this issue with translation. Right now, uh, Ukraine created this Ukrainian translation service, and I'm a part of it as well. 
and they are sitting here, most of them sitting in a shelter. Many of them have nothing to do. Many of them are great translators. So uh, we have around 1,500 professional translators ready to cooperate on that. Mm -hmm. And I guess if there is any further need, they will gladly translate Ukrainian Wonderful. plays because, you know, that's necessary. Thank so we you. can cooperate well, on that. That's that's wonderful, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, I want to say I want to say it, that's an important. You bring up an important uh, topic here that I can actually add something of of interest. I believe uh, you talk about the fact that the reputation of Ukrainian uh, playwrights has not ha has not been the highest in in recent times. You know, I sent I had I talked on Zoom last night with a, a woman from um, from Warsaw. Uh, who is uh, who runs an avant-garde theater there. And uh, I'm not entirely sure how, oh, it was through Philip Arnaud in the Center for Th uh, International Theater Development. She got a hold of some of the plays, the, the short plays that the uh, writers of the theater of playwrights in Kiev had written. And she uh, contacted me and she said, I wanna talk to you about these things. She said, I'm an avant-garde theater director. She said, I'm sick and tired of post-dramatic texts I'm sick and tired of postmodern texts. I can't stand them anymore. Uh, she said, there's nothing anybody is writing that, that a director who is looking forward to the theater of the future can do. And mm -hmm. she said, these texts that you have collected by these writers are exactly what I have been looking for. They, they came to me out of the blue and I am absolutely stunned. She said, the simplicity and the purity and the brevity and, and the, the impact that these texts have, she said that is precisely the way I see theater. And I can see new visual um, approaches. She said, I can see new spatial approaches. And, and she said, I wanna work with these writers and I wanna work with these texts and we are gonna look for a theater of the future in them. So you, you see, Alex, uh, you know, that it, uh, I was extremely excited to hear her say that. And um, it's, it's very possible that Ukrainian writers now are going to just forge right ahead of everybody else. It's, uh, that's the way history works. History works in strange ways. And, and it, could, it could very well be that this is what we are seeing happening right now as a result of this horrendous historical moment. So John, if I may, let me ask you, people watching this broadcast, I mean, I'm lucky to be on your list. So I have your emails and thank you, bless you. I'm going to do a reading at Tufts, but if people watching this broadcast want to do a play, want to do a reading, where do they, where do they go? What, how, what do they do? How do they? Well, you can, uh, as, I, as I say to everybody, if you, if you can't find my email on the internet, you're not trying. So let me just say publicly that my email is jfreed16 at gmail.com. Uh, you can write to me directly. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook. You can, uh, th those are the easiest ways probably. Um, uh, and anybody here, if you know anybody else that's in this, that's in this discussion, uh, they can all forward to me. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to hear from people and, and I, I want to do as much of this as we can. Uh, I, I feel like, absolutely like Egan uh, and like other people, I, I feel that, you know, what we're doing is just so minuscule and you feel so helpless and so hopeless. And, and yet what you do is you just keep doing, you know, you keep doing it. You just, whatever it is you can do, you do it and you do it more. And so uh, I'm happy, more than happy to help people do more if they, if they want to join us. Thank you I so think there's much. A Wilma reading coming up, right? There's a Wilma reading coming up, a Wilma Theater online reading that's coming right. up. Right, Seems right, very in, Phil in Philadelphia, yeah. Uh, it's going to be uh, Natasha Varesh beats uh, Bad Roads, yeah. There's, I, I think this may be on the video compilation that your company made, Igor, which I'm going to ask Blair to run in a minute, but there's a, an actor named Tatiana who says art isn't an escape. We can fight with what we can do. We need to celebrate life no matter what. And I think there is something about all of these artistic activities that it's not a, certainly not a moment of celebration, but of affirmation and defiance. And that's what's come across 
through the screens, the Ukrainian people, the, the courage, the defiance, the refusal to just say, we give up. I mean, it's just, just the opposite. It's truly inspiring. Um, so actually, Blair, could you run that tape, please? It's about three minutes. We hope we dream together. Yesterday, someone sent me uh, pictures that I'm attaching of a black box theater in Kiev, which has been oh. turned into a shelter. It looks just like our theater here. This could be us. This is us. I'm sending a message from our theater to your theater, a message of hope. We are with you. We stand with you. We are against Putin's war. We're launching a campaign for Ukraine, a campaign of hope led by artists to provide humanitarian aid in Ukraine. Hi, this is Mark Ruffalo, and I'm uh, sending good prayers to the folks in Ukraine fighting for their freedom and independence. Um, if there's one thing you could do to help, please go to Artists for Ukraine um, at the Artican Theater website down below. and. Um, give generously to uh, people who are uh, trying to put their lives back together. Thanks. Hello, beautiful people. I'm Irina Kaptilova. I'm an actress from Ukraine. I have a minute and I would like, before I go to the basement, I, I would like to share with you um, one of my favorite Ukrainian poem of uh, Ivan Franko. This poem is about love. Чого являєшся мені у сні? Чого звертаєш ти до мене? Чудові очі ті ясні. Сумні, немов криниці дно студене. Чому уста твої німі? Який докір, яке страждання? Яке несповнене бажання у сні, мов марево червоне, Здіймається і знову тоне у тьмі. В житті темною згордувала, моє те серце надірвала, І з нього вирвала одні оті питання голосні, пісні. Hi, I'm Sarah Rule. I'm a playwright and I'm standing with the people of Ukraine. Hi, this is Jessica Hecht in New York City, sending every ounce of love and strength to the remarkable people of Ukraine. My name is Danny Burstein, and I stand with the people of Ukraine. I send them all my love and all my support. <laughs> Hi there, we are the cast of Come From Away here on Broadway in New York City. Uh, to the Ukrainian people, there are no words uh, for what you're going through, absolutely no words, but we just want you to know that we stand with you and that we hold you in our hearts. Um, and we see you. We, we see, see you. you. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you very much for running that, Blair, and Igor for making it. Um, I'd like to just continue the conversation if John and Alex and Igor have any questions or comments, questions you want to ask, comments for each other, for our viewers, um, just to help people focus on what they can possibly do to be helpful or- I would, just... I would, like, I would like to ask Alex to tell us something about the shows that he's doing right now. I mean, what kind of a, what kind of, you, you, you're, uh, Alina said that you just opened a show on, Mon on Sunday. What kind of a show could you have opened on Sunday? I, I want to know what <laughs> I want to know what that was and what it was what it was about. Yeah, uh, I mean, from the day two, probably we knew uh, that theater's gonna we're gonna do theater still here because we are the theater and we got uh, six actors and two directors here, so that should should have led us to something, but we couldn't. For like 10 days we couldn't because this amount of news the deaths of the people you know you know but that's that was impossible but then we started rehearsals pretty much simultaneously on the same day or like you know me and tanya shilapko the other director we started rehearsing two plays and tanya was the first she actually finished her play first it was a little piece by harold pinter 
the Nobel laureate Harold Pinter. It's called the New World Order, which is very ironic if you, you know, combine the context. And it was written in 1991, and it was written after the events of Gulf, you know, this Gulf War uh, in Iraq. And yeah, uh, but of course, Tanya rethought it, and it's three pages. So technically, it led us to 12 minutes performance. And it was very skillfully done. done. Tanya is a great director. It was done with two actors here, live piano musician, because we also have some musicians here, <laughs> and one actor who is, is a NASA shelter in Lviv. So it combines the, the, the Zoom performance of an actor and living people here. It's very well done. We got the uh, permission from Harold Pinter Legacy to stream it and perform it, for which is a, very grateful. And we did it here with actually audience. Guys, it was amazing to have like living people watching mm -hmm. you. And by living people, I mean the other inhabitants of the shelter, but still, you know, it was something incredible. Uh, but it's not like, you know, we're not going on a tour these days from one shelter to another, <laughs> pretty much. So we basically did this show. We recorded it in a pretty good quality. We have it. I'm not sure if Harold Pinter Legacy will allow us to stream it worldwide again, but we did it. And yes, uh, we did it and we have it. So that's one thing, and maybe we'll repeat it. And after the war, we'll definitely do it again. That's one show. And the other one is called I Directed, and it's called The Cuckoo Shriek. And it's stage adaptation of a very famous book called The Book Thief. Probably you guys heard it. It's The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, the oh, Australian yeah. writer. Yeah. And if, for those who don't know, it's, uh, the, it's based, uh, it tells us the story of a little German town of Malking, and this is the story of German town of Malking from 1939 till 1945. And it's about ordinary people, ordinary German people who, you know, never wanted anything, but then in 1943, they start being bombed by alien forces and how they spend all their nights and days in a bomb shelter and so on. And, you know, you see the parallels why we're doing this story. Uh, yeah, and it's a modern performance with one actress, Annabelle, and we actually make it a story in a story. It's been told from a bomb shelter. So for the props, we're using five cans of meat, actually the canned meat, because that's what we eat here these days, and seven books, because that's what we read. So that's all props for the show. I hope it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good. So you, so have wait seven, till the you have seven books there in the shelter that you're all No, reading? we have many more. Oh, we actually... Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, there's another story. Annabelle is also the publisher. She has the little publishing agency that published books. And in my theater, in the storage, we had around, let's put it like 400 books of her uh, publishing agency. And we used it to block the windows from a direct hit of a missile. So basically, like, these books are now, you know, blocking the windows like the sandbags. We're using the books. But those that we don't put in the windows, we use in my show. Well, that's kind of combination. <laughs> You know. you know, it's it's amazing. The things you're saying to us in this broadcast is so matter of fact, with humor even, well, we use some books to block the missiles and the ones, I mean, it's just the conditions that you're dealing with that you're just, I don't want to say thriving under because nobody would have wanted it to happen, but that you are more than making do. You are really just using the moment, using, which actors always do, but really using it so resourcefully. I mean, it's, you know, you read about the Holocaust and art during the Holocaust, performances during the Holocaust, and you wonder how can people living in existential situations in times of crisis make art? But you realize, and I also realized I misspoke earlier, the quote from um, Tatiana about art not being an escape is from one of your actors. And it was on the, the video that I saw that because Arlequin, um, joined a, a, a group of theaters around the world to live stream your play, the Pinter play, so that people could see it. And hopefully um, on, on Facebook, and then hopefully to stream more of them so that they'll reach even wider audiences through social media. But it's, it's incredibly, um, I mean, it's, it's just really amazing. It's really amazing. Alex, I want, I want to say that uh, I highly encourage you to contact the Pinter Legacy people again and ask for permission to post uh, uh, in, uh, on openly on Facebook. Uh, and if, I, I really, I, I just can't imagine 
that they would refuse permission. I just, I simply can't imagine that. But if they were to refuse, if they were to say there's a problem with that, let me know. And I will contact a director friend of mine who was a very close friend of Pinter's. She wrote a book about him um, and, and her connections with them. We could, we could lean on that. But I, so just, you know, keep that in mind, but I just can't imagine that you'd have a problem. And it would be a wonderful thing if you could put that up on, on uh, open stream on YouTube, we would share that. Uh, I, you know, we would include that as part of uh, our project and I'd, I'd push it. Egan would push it. We'd get everybody sharing it and it would, it would bring a lot of attention to uh, your situation and your situation, your theater and what you're doing deserve, deserve that, in, that, uh, that publicity. Thank you very much, John. That's really, really helpful. I do hope there won't be any problem, but it's always good to know. Well, you know, Tanya is a big fan of Pinter. She actually staged the birthday party by Pinter and Ashes to Ashes already. So to know a person who knows a person who's a good friend of Pinter is, again, a blast to us. Yeah, and here's a little story, if I may, to, like, you know, to support the point of being brave in the time of, oh, duress. It's basically, that's what Ukraine always was. There is the story of 1930s, which I already mentioned. Like they say, okay, Russia attacked Ukraine. No, it's, Russia was always attacking Ukraine by this way or the other. In 1930s, there was a tremendous burst of Ukrainian culture, many playwrights, uh, many people of theater. Among them, there was the best Les Kurbas. Probably you never heard his name, but Les Kurbas is like Ukrainian Stanislavski. He developed the whole principles of theater acting quite different from what Stanislavski was saying. Anyway, theoretician, he had his own theater. He started first theater studio, whatever. Then he was repressed. Russians took him to Siberia, not to Siberia, but to or Arkhangelsk region, to one of the camps, uh, basically a prison right there for his views and for his support of Ukrainians. And in that prison, Les Kurbas started a theater. Mm. In the prison, being a prisoner of Russian empire, Soviet Union, he started a theater and he put several performances. And after that, he was shot. They took mm. him to the woods and they shot, the actual legend says, I don't know if it's true, but I, I kind of think that it might be. They took him and his good friend, uh, Kulish, Mikola Kulish, who is a playwright. They put them together and shot them with one bullet to save the bullet. Like, like you know, and it was 1930s. So what Russians do now, it's kind of not surprising to me. And how Ukrainians we are, it's kind of not surprising to me also. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. Igor, any thoughts about what Arlikin might do next in terms of um, either plays that you would stream or I know you've got a, a very exciting project not rela related to Ukraine now going about to happen in New York, but anything that would be tied more to the current situation? We're hoping to continue to support uh, uh, this theater company and stream, uh, th stream their uh, productions. Uh, uh, we are hoping to continue our fundraising efforts. We, We've been fairly successful with those, and we've found a lot of support. Um, in regards to the uh, to the exciting upcoming project, you know, it, the the world has changed so much, and uh, my, my the, the project of um, the, the play that I'm doing uh, of Broadway's The Cherry Orchard, and it's 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 an interesting time to uh, to do a show about the loss of the world. Right, uh, loss of the cherry or orchard as a loss of the world, loss of Russia, loss of the world, and in some and in, and it also uh, in a way it's a, it's almost like a loss of Chekhov for the world because right now and we've discussed this with John a little bit right now doing Chekhov it's very difficult I think Putin not only bombed Ukraine he also bombed Chekhov um, so. Uh, I think my my production will definitely be affected by it. Uh, there's definitely going to be themes of what is happening in the in the world and how um, 
I remember a lecture by Anatoly Smelyansky, and he was talking about, and this was like 20 years ago, he was talking about this play, and he's saying that there is a horror that enters. And for some reason, I remember this phrase, and it's, it's probably a translation of, of something that he read, and he said, like, the horror enters. And I, uh, from that, all of that lecture, I, I specifically remember those words. And in this play, and in, in, uh, in, uh, in today's world, the horror enters and sweeps these people. And uh, this is what, going, uh, what my play is going to be about as well. Igor, I'd like to jump in with a question for you, if I may. Uh, your actors are such fine actors and the readings that you guys did of the Belarus plays were, you know, they, they were just really superb. And, <coughs> excuse me, we do have some really short pieces we have some places, places that are like two, two and a half pages, between two and a half and four pages. They're just the kind of things that your actors could knock off falling asleep uh, at night uh, before they go to bed or in the, even before they have their coffee, coffee in the morning. They, and, and you could put those things up as, as videos, and I would love to do that. I would love to have the, uh, the take of, of your theater on at least a couple of these really short plays. Think about I that. I, real, I, I realize you're extremely busy, but I, I'm, I'm just going to reach out and, and mention that. You, you might not have thought about it because these, these texts, most of them really are very short. It would take very, very little work. You put Blair okay. behind a camera, uh, 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 put Sarah on lights, and, and, and one of your actors reading the text, and you're going to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Yes, absolutely. I'm very interested. Yeah. <laughs> John, are these the plays that came on the recent list that I think you sent out yesterday? That yes. there's a list, yeah. They've they've been yeah, yes. Most of these are are new in the last couple of days, um, uh, because they came to me uh, over the last week, and then we were getting them translated. So yeah, there are uh, there are twelve to fourteen uh, brand new uh, texts uh, that are anywhere between uh, one thousand words and 3,400 words, very short, uh, you know, they're bite-sized and, and, yet, and yet they are so powerful that as I say, you know, my colleague in Warsaw said, I see in these texts, I, I, I see a potential theater of the future because these are unlike anything I've ever read before. So uh, yeah, they're worth, they're worth seeing. Because I started going down the list looking for anything under 3,400 3, words. Right. Because if that, I do. Over, on the right hand side of the list? Yeah. 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 Go down. <laughs> would you think it would be a value for student actors? Would you want us to take? Oh, tape absolutely. Almost? Absolutely. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm not crazy about these, these kinds of words and these kinds of things. I'm very old fashioned. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm almost an old man myself, and I'm very old fashioned, but I. There's, here's one thing, I'm, I'm never interested in whatever goes viral. Whatever goes viral, I pay no attention. Um, but I want this to go viral. I want Ukrainian plays to go viral. I want, I want Ukrainian plays all over everybody's. I want them in their eyes and in their ears and in their hearts. And um, uh, I, I just feel as though it's, it's something that we can do. It's something that everybody can do. I mean, your students can do it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, eager actors can do it. Everybody can. They're, 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 it's doable, and and there it is. And once you've done it, it's out there, and it is now working, and it is now reaching people, and it is now having an effect on people, and it is supporting the writers, and is supporting everybody in Ukraine who says, looks up and says, "Oh my goodness," you know, uh, as 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 Alex was saying, you know, the Ukrainian. Uh, playwriting has, has not had a great reputation for a long time. Well, that's going to change. Uh, we, we've talked about it already, but I'm just, I'm just repeating it in case somebody needs to hear it again. Uh, that's going to change. This is going to change that. And, and uh, I feel as though that's a way that we can all try to help this horrible okay. situation. <laughs> The words Absolutely. start failing you. You know, you get to the you get to the punchline, and the words just. That's fail. right. <laughs> but honestly, John, what you've just said—you know, the fire, the passion, the vision, the sense of urgency, the desire to connect—that's really what the heart of theater is. 
and to bring the world's focus to the atrocities that are being committed on a daily basis and the courage of the people who are resisting and fighting back. So, you know, the more that we can help put it out there, um, the the better it it can be eventually. I'm being reminded by Sarah, thank you, Sarah, that people who are watching, you can find information, you can find pro-English theater, Arlequin Players Theater, excuse me, and the Worldwide Play Reading Project on the web and on Facebook. And you can also donate directly to pro-English theater on their website to support humanitarian aid and art in Kiev. So there are easily reachable places where you can donate and know that your donation will be put to very good use. So we are just about out of time. Do any of you have one final comment that you would like to make before we sign off with a very moving video? <laughs> Alex, were you ready? Alex, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I have several initiatives, but I really want to speak about this one that was never on my mind until our conference today, because that's surprising. Like this meeting is not only, you know, to express what we all feel, but to create something new and the collaboration. So I was thinking, we are here in a bomb shelter. Yeah, we work on our shows, but we have two directors who can pretty much direct. Why don't we direct a Ukrainian play translated into English with some uh, American actors down there? Both me and Tanya can pretty much well direct over Zoom. We already did it with some of the actors we have to, because many of our actors. So this is the type of collaboration that would tighten you know, the links and American actors down there, Ukrainian play in English, Ukrainian actor here. Uh, that could be the product that shows solidarity. And I'm very interested now, like, you know, I love to direct. So that's the collaboration I would really love to do on our side, you know? That would be fantastic. Um, I hope I will, I, will get, I will get your email, Alex, and we will be in touch about this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it would be exciting. It would really be exciting. I, at this point, need to wrap us up because we are almost out of time. And so, again, I just profound gratitude and thank you to Alex, to Igor, to John, to the producing team at How Round, How, How, this is very hard to say, it, Howl Round, <laughs> to the Pro English Company, to Arlequin Players Company, and especially to Sarah Stackhouse and Blair Cadden for their support with this program. So I just would like to say courage, blessings onward, and let's make a collaboration work. It would be very, very exciting. So thank you so much, Alex, for bringing the reality of what is happening to us, but not just the horrific aspects of it, but the courageous response to it and the artistic response to it, which I think everybody is so eager to hear about. So to end this program, we're going to show a video of actor Pavel Piskun singing the Ukrainian national anthem from his shelter in the Ukraine. So again, thank you to everybody for watching us. There will be no conversation after the video that will take you out and just enjoy the rest of your day or night. Best wishes to everyone. Thank you so much. Ще не вмерла в Україні ні слава, ні воля. Ще нам, братя українці, усміхнеться доля. 
Свинуть наші вороженьки, як роса на сонці. Запануєм і ми, братя, у своїй стороні душу й тіло ми положем за нашу свободу і покажем, що ми братя козацького роду. Франківці, тримаймося, ми обов'язково переможемо, ми ще зіграємо, ми ще зберемося разом, ми ще разом заспіваємо. Підтримуємо одне, одне одного, тримаємося, кожен робимо на, на своєму місці, що може, для захисту нашої батьківщини, для захисту наших людей, наших дітей, наших побратимів, Збройних сил України. Господь з нами, Він нам допоможе, ми обов'язково переможемо. Обіймаю франківці.